welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to do a Friday Reads video. So it has been a little over a month since I last recorded a video and so I thought I would ease myself back into it by making a quick Friday Reads video, uh, sharing some of my current reads. I've had a pretty slow start to my reading year so far. It's almost the end of February and I've only read eight books so far, uh, but I'm really trying not to stress about the numbers and I've pretty much scrapped the TBR that I had planned for February and I'm just letting myself mood read and pick up whatever book catches my interest right now. If you saw my post on my community tab, my husband's grandmother, who was uh, an incredible woman who raised him for a lot of his childhood, she passed away at the end of January. And so I just wasn't feeling in the mood for reading really at all for a couple weeks there. And then it seemed like just when I was kind of getting back in the mood for reading and wanting to uh, pick up some new books and create some booktube videos, I got uh, an eye infection. And so that really put a damper on a lot of reading besides uh, audiobooks. And I really didn't feel like having that immortalized at all on video. So. Uh, that extended my little hiatus here. I feel like it's still a little bit more red than normal and I can't put makeup on or anything because I'm trying not to cross contaminate and have it spread. Uh, but I was too impatient to talk to you about the books that I'm reading and so hopefully you don't mind if one of my eyes is still looking a little bit odd. But I'm finally feeling like I'm back in the swing of things and have some books on the go that I'm really uh, thoroughly enjoying and excited to be reading. I also reached a very exciting milestone here on booktube while I was taking a little break and that is that I finally reached 1000 subscribers which was incredibly exciting and happened kind of really quickly all of a sudden uh, after a few years where I thought that I was probably never going to reach that number. So I'm hoping to do some kind of live stream or something to celebrate that uh, big booktube milestone sometime in the coming weeks and if you are one of my newer subscribers welcome and I'm so glad that you found my channel. So without further ado, let me get into the books that I am reading heading into this weekend. The first book that I'm in the middle of at the moment is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is my big intimidating Russian classic for the year and I have so far finished the first two parts out of I believe six parts plus an epilogue. Uh, and so I'm going to be starting listening to the third part and I've been listening to it while I work on a paint by number so that's been really fun and it's also I'm a buddy read that I'm doing with my best friend that I buddy read Anna Karenina with last winter and so it's always enjoyable to read a big classic like that with someone you can kind of bounce your ideas and theories and shocked reactions with I am very surprised by how much I am enjoying Crime and Punishment so far and again how readable it is. I think maybe because the title sounds so much like an academic textbook and I have heard people say that it's like quite philosophical that I was expecting it to be a bit of a slog to get through and a book that I kind of would uh, look back on and be glad I had read but maybe not enjoy the reading process of as much but I am loving it so far. It's uh, very interesting because we're pretty much inside the mind of our main character and he is uh, a bit unhinged and unreliable and you kind of feel yourself getting sucked into his downward spiral and sympathizing with him at times when you probably shouldn't. Uh, so that part has been really fascinating to be uh, very much inside the mind of one character for the entire novel so far. I'm not sure if we're going to switch point of view at any point, but I'm really enjoying uh, how attached we are to our main character. Uh, like I said, I finished the first two parts, so the crime of Crime and Punishment has occurred, and we're now watching the fallout of those actions and uh, how he reacts to what he has done and that is super interesting and there are a few side characters now starting to get added in uh, including his mother and sister and a sister's fiance uh, and i'm really excited to see where that plot line goes because it seems like there's uh, some interesting family dynamics and economic dynamics at work there our buddy reading schedule for crime and punishment is basically one part per week roughly and so i'm going to be uh, reading through part three this coming week and I'm very interested to see where part three is going to go because so far our main character is very bad at committing crime in that 
uh, he keeps almost confessing to what he's done and it's like, oh my goodness, if you don't want to be caught, you need to be quiet because you're acting like wildly suspicious. Like that Parks and Recreation, don't be suspicious scene, like that's what he's doing. Like going back to the scene of the crime, talking to the detectives investigating the case and saying way too much. Uh, and so I don't know how long he's going to be able to hold together any sort of facade of having his life together. Whenever I am kind of in uh, a reading slump or in a mood where I haven't felt like picking up books as much, I tend to gravitate back towards reading either mysteries or romance. And so that's kind of where the next books on my uh, currently reading list are coming from. So the mystery that I'm in the middle of is The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels by Janice Hallett. This is an e-arc that I received from NetGalley and it was published in North America at the end of January and so I'm kind of catching up on reading some of my e-arcs and I have read already from Janice Hallett The Appeal, which I loved, The Christmas Appeal, which was her uh, kind of Christmas short story that was released this past Christmas season. And then I've also read The Twyford Code. I didn't enjoy The Twyford Code quite as much as I enjoyed the two books in the Appeal series. But so far I am 15% through The Alperton Angels and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the Twyford Code was a little bit less multimedia than The Appeal series is and The Alperton Angels feels like more of a return to the multimedia format that I really enjoy. The Alperton Angels is written in the format of a series of kind of research notes from a true crime author who is collecting information for a book about uh, a small cult that had a tragic ending 18 years ago. And 18 years is significant because there was uh, an infant who was at the center of uh, kind of the implosion of this cult. There was a murder suicide of some of the cult members and this baby was rescued along with its teenage parents and that baby would be coming of age now and be available for an interview. So basically we're following this author as she's trying to put the pieces back together from this investigation so that she can be the first person to track down this baby who should be graduating out of foster care and hopefully bag them for a lucrative interview. There's another author who is working on a competing book, also trying to reach the baby. And uh, like I said, it's very multimedia. So we're getting text messages, we're getting emails, we're getting transcribed interviews, we're getting uh, research notes uh, all together as if we have stumbled across this file of the author's research in a safety deposit box. I find this multimedia format for Janice Hallett's mysteries to be quite unique. And it also makes for a very fast paced reading experience that I really enjoy. So I'm looking forward to continuing on with that book and hopefully finishing it up this weekend and finding out if our author ever discovers the baby and kind of what uh, is the broader mystery at the heart of this cult investigation. Then I have another book that I am 11% of the way through and I am still kind of figuring out if I'm going to soft DNF it or keep reading. I'm going to read a little bit more and then make a decision and that is The Emperor of Paris by C.S. Richardson. This is quite a short book which is why I'm kind of tempted to keep going with it but it is uh, quite literary uh, and maybe more literary than I'm really feeling up to at the moment. It's written by a Canadian author who has won a few awards and I believe this book was actually nominated for or longlisted for the Scotiabank Giller Prize when it was released back in the early 2010s. Uh, so it definitely has been recognized as having merit. And I'm not sure exactly what the plot line is yet, but I know we're following a man called Octavio who runs a, a small bakery near Notre Dame in Paris and he kind of specializes in the baguette. It's very stereotypical. At the very beginning of the book, it opens to the bakery being on fire and it seems that he has uh, a fairly extensive home library that they are trying to save, but it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to save any of the books. And he is out actually coming home with more books. And so that part of it obviously uh, struck a nerve for me and I was uh, instantly drawn into his story. And then we immediately went into a flashback to his childhood where we learn more about how his parents met and kind of started this bakery. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I believe there is going to be a female main character as well 
who is an art restorer working in the Louvre from what I've read in the description. And so uh, the chapter that I'm about to start, I believe we're now gonna flash back to her childhood and upbringing. Like I said, it's quite a short book and so it probably wouldn't take much for me to keep going through it, but I'm going to see. One of the things that's kind of annoying me with it, and this is a bit petty, but I'm reading it on Libby and it has no chapter divisions. And so there's no way to tell like, how many pages to the next chapter to know how much longer you have to read before there's like a logical break point and you also can't uh, get an idea of like how many chapters there are in the book or uh, kind of what the division is between characters and like I said we're just now getting into the backstory of our female main character I'm and it sounds like there's going to be some sort of faded meeting between them that involves a mysterious traveler an impoverished painter a jaded bookseller, and a book of fairy tales. So there's definitely a lot of elements that I really enjoy and the description of Paris so far is really uh, breathtaking. I'm really enjoying uh, the descriptive writing about life in Paris. It's historical fiction set, I believe, kind of just before the First World War, like early 20th century, late 19th century. Uh, don't quote me on that because like I said, I've only read the first chapter or two but like I said it doesn't have chapter divisions so I can't easily tell like which year each chapter is set in because there's no chapters really officially in this book. I'm gonna give this one another go and read another section or two and kind of see where the female character's story is taking us and then make a decision about whether this is like a softy enough for now or uh, a book that I'm really interested in continuing to read. And then the fiction book that I'm about to start reading is A New Day Rising by Lorraine Snelling. This book is like frontier Christian fiction about a Norwegian immigrant family uh, and it's like a multi-book family saga. The first book in the series I had had on my Norwegian reading through my family tree series uh, a number of years ago and it was one of the books that I didn't get to when I was reading through the books on that TBR. And then this week I stumbled across a six hour long YouTube video analyzing the Kirsten books from American Girl. And I was a big Kirsten girl growing up. Kirsten was the American Girl historical doll that I had. And I related very deeply to her character because it was very similar to my ancestors story. Although we were Norwegian immigrants, not Swedish immigrants. Uh, but she looked quite a bit like me and we also share a birthday which uh, was very special when you're like a nine or ten year old girl uh, to have uh, the historical character that you like the most also have your very same birthday was just very exciting. Anyway I stumbled across this six hour long incredible YouTube video. I'll link it in the description in case you also grew up loving the historical American girl dolls and stories but what this content creator has done is go back and read through all of Kristen's books and analyze their literary merit, the historical details uh, kind of hidden within the plot, uh, as well as recap the doll accessories and crafts and stuff that were associated with each book. And so I have been thoroughly enjoying watching through this recap video and reliving all my favorite Kirsten memories. And it really had me in the mood to read like a pioneer type story. And I remembered that I had this uh, book by Lorraine Snelling on my t Norwegian TBR. I hadn't gotten to it. And so uh, this past week I picked up the first book in the series, which is called An Untamed Heart. And I read through it in a day and I really enjoyed it. It was a solid like four star for a Christian romance type novel. I found it a little bit less cheesy than the Jeanette Oak Prairie books that I have read. I think the ones I have read are from her Love Comes Softly series, uh, but I found that a little bit uh, too over the top and saccharine for me. Whereas I found this one hit the mark for me between uh, kind of the Christian women's fiction elements as well as the historical fiction elements. And so I'm eager to follow up with book two in the series and see where our main character Ingerberg's life is going to take her. There was some uh, big tragedies right at the end of the first book and she is uh, desperately trying to hold on and prove up their homestead and I am rooting for her so I can't wait to pick up that book. And I think there's like eight or so books about this extended family and their little uh, frontier community. 
And so I think this is really going to hit the mark for what I was in the mood for at the moment, which is essentially a grown-up version of the Kirsten books. And then the nonfiction book that I'm reading right now is another one that I got an eARC from off of NetGalley, and that is In the Courts of Three Popes, An American Lawyer and Diplomat in the Last Absolute Monarchy of the West by Mary Ann Glendon. The author of this book is a professor at Harvard Law School and she has been involved in the Vatican in a diplomatic capacity uh, during the papacy of John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and now Francis. So she was uh, the first woman to lead a Vatican delegation when she led the delegation to the UN Conference on Women's Rights in the 90s. And then she was later the US ambassador to the Holy See. So she's been a very high level diplomat and this book kind of explores uh, those three popes and the different uh, initiatives that she was a part of during her time working in the Vatican. I'm still kind of at the beginning of this book. Up to this point, uh, she's been involved in kind of various social justice related initiatives uh, in within the United States and now is when uh, she's going to be visiting Rome for the first time. Uh, so I think I'm about 10% of the way into this book as well, and I believe it was just published this past week. And so fingers crossed I can get it wrapped up in the next uh, couple of days here so that I can still get a review out within the first week or two after publication. And then lastly, I have my current devotional read, which is The Return of the Prodigal Son by Henry Nouwen. I'm thoroughly enjoying this book because it is all centering around Rembrandt's uh, Return of the Prodigal painting. Rembrandt is one of my favorite uh, Dutch Golden Age painters, which is my favorite historical time period. And so to have like a very in-depth art historian type analysis of aspects of this painting merged with uh, Nouwen's uh, theological meditations on the depth of meaning within Rembrandt's painting has just absolutely been a delight so far. And the one thing that I am loving about this edition is not only do we have the painting on the cover, uh, we also have it on this fold out, which folds out like this. So when you're reading the text, you can reference the painting without having to flip to the cover. It's absolutely brilliant. And I understand why this doesn't work for most kind of like art history type books because most um, art books would be dealing with more than one painting. But for books like this that are featured around one painting, this is just uh, absolutely a life-changing way to read a book about a painting because I can have it open and reference. Uh, as I'm reading, I can be looking back and forth without having to close and open my book. So this uh, edition I just bought off of Thrift Books. And so that was uh, kind of very lucky when I opened up my Thrift Books package and realized that not only is it in perfect condition, but it also has this really cool uh, flat feature. So those are all of the books that I am reading heading into this weekend. I hope you enjoyed catching up with me about my current reads, and I would love to know what books you're in the middle of or about to start as well. Uh, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend of reading. And until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.